All right, cool. So by now, I guess you guys already know my name. And um, well, again, the topic I'll be talking about is drugs. Particularly, my opponent Julian brought up the uh, the main claim: legalization of marijuana would be beneficial to the economy. So I'm here to uh, argue why Julian failed to prove this point. With uh, my counterclaim, which is legalization of marijuana, would do little to benefit the economy. All right. So the first secondary claim that Julian brought up was the amount of people prosecuted for marijuana-related offense. And then the first bullet, it goes, U.S., most criminal country, 25% of the world's prisoners are from the United States. Okay. First of all, I don't even know where you got these numbers, so, you know, I guess uh, I, its credibility is uh, questionable. But also, if it's, we have the most prisoners, if it's uh, regarding drugs, you, you have to consider the appetite that the United States has for drugs, or the number that, you know, it just, it just doesn't really hold up. Okay, the next, next point. $68 billion per year on corrections and one-third on nonviolent crimes. Again, these numbers are, uh, you know, it's not well cited. He got it from the Time magazine. That's what I'm, I'm looking at right now. But uh, there's nothing in particular that says how, you know, it says how much we're spending money, but not how legalizing marijuana would uh, benefit the economy. So the one thing that I question is, what about the salary of the prison guards? Is that included? And in a survey released by the Sacramento Bee stated that correctional officers earn a maximum base pay of $73,728. That's excluding the benefits, the early, you know, retirement, etc. And that's 39% more the average base uh, pay for prison guards in 10 other states. <coughs> so part of that money that's being spent on corrections is, you know, the pay that the salary that the guards are getting, etc., etc. Not just necessarily because of marijuana. And then again, last month in Sacramento, a $7 billion proposal was made by the governor to up the uh, health care of the prisons. So again, I guess that, is, that would disqualify Julian's statement that $68 billion per year on corrections are spent because it's not necessarily for marijuana, but you have to take into consideration everything else. Okay, 47.5% of all drugs arrests are marijuana related. So what? <coughs> How does that improve the economy? His second point, marijuana could boost the economy, and in a one of his sub points, he goes, it brings in double what milk and cream bring as in the revenue in California per year. See, that's a fallacy of work. Because if marijuana is illegal, how can we estimate that number? How do we know that number is exact? And then also, you have to take into consideration the cost, the revenue margin, the supply, and the demand. So that disqualifies that point. And then he goes, if tax at a 10%, that's what the deal is, it would give California $1.4 billion per year. The thing is, if you get rid of the risk factor, you know, and everyone starts growing, let's say you make it legal, everyone's going to want to start growing it. You're going to have Farmer John, you know, switch from whatever he was doing to growing marijuana, and then you're going to have Jimmy Dean and, uh, you know, Marie Callender do the same thing. So even a high school, you know, econ student, will let you, you know, could tell you the supply and demand chart. If so many people are growing it, then the cost of marijuana is going to go down. Also, uh, the, claim, the claim itself was vague. Again, you know, legalization of marijuana would be beneficial to the economy. I say vague because if it's legal, does that mean I can grow it? Does that mean we can grow it in our backyard? Just to, you know, just to let you know, marijuana is relatively easy to grow. It's, it's a weed. You pretty much just need sun, and that's about it. So, what about moonshine? You know? Like, just like liquor. And the thing is, most people are buying from the source anyways. They're buying illegally, so how would you tax the people who are growing it in their backyard, in their garage, et cetera, et cetera? Okay, and he goes, saves about $1 billion by ceasing to prosecute and imprison nonviolent offenders. That's another thing, another one of his points. And so that's arguable, but that doesn't mean that crimes, you know, is not going to cease to exist. I mean, I don't think drug dealers or the Southside Mexicans are going to go, oh, oh, well, you know, marijuana is legal now. I guess we should go back to school and find an honest job. That's not going to happen. Criminals are criminals. There's still going to be people going in jail for prison, and uh, you know, it, it's just not necessarily marijuana, but gang violence is still going to be there, and people are, you know, the state's still going to be spending money fighting against gang gang violence. So legalizing of marijuana would do nothing in that sense. 
And then, and then one of his, la uh, his last bullet points was thousands of new jobs in agriculture, marketing, packaging, and advertising. Legalizing of marijuana would bring undesirable people over here, you know, people who just want to get high and whatnot. And the thing is, with that, it's, it's bad enough that we don't have jobs for everyone, you know, for the people that are here. But now we're going to bring in all these, like, moronic potheads trying to, you know, we're going to try to compete with jobs with them too. And then not to mention, like, if you start growing the big old fields, which won't be selling, that the products won't be selling real cheap, you're still going to have, like, immigrant workers. You know, I mean, I have my deal with Chewy, you know, hacking down the, <laughs> the plant. And how does that benefit the economy? So how do you create jobs like that? If anything, it'll be worse. That's, that's what I'm saying. And uh, as far as advertising, what if it's outlawed just like tobaccos, you know, and cigarettes? And then uh, his last point was school budget cuts. Budget reduced by <coughs> 97.6 million for, from 2008 to 2009. You know, it's cool, but uh, again, that doesn't prove anything why legalizing marijuana would boost our economy. It just pretty much shows us how much money our school needs. So uh, in the end, legalizing marijuana would create, uh, it would create new consumers opposed to rescuing old ones. And again, just, you know, you could go many ways of this, the rise of healthcare, or people, you know, addicted to it, or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then Joel W. Hay, professor of pharmaceutical economics at the University of Southern California states that marijuana is a drug that clouds people's judgment. It affects their ability to concentrate and react. So does this mean we're headed towards a society of, of potheads? How is this good for the economy? So uh, my final thought is the truth is that legalizing marijuana to benefit the economy is a ridiculous, unviable solution and simply an excuse just to get high. I heard him emphasize that. You know. <laughs> so you don't Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. All right. Well, yeah, I did the topic and the proposition pretty clearly. You've got an argument uh, about what your counterclaim is going to be. Uh, the challenge on the prison issue is laid out. It's, it sounds like it's going to be structured, but it ends up, uh, you know, not not having as clear declarative claims as I thought it was going to have. Uh, at first, you talk about the absence of a source for the advocate's data, and then there's some discussion about the cost estimates and uh, where they uh, came from. I'm not quite sure the relevance of the prison guard argument until toward the end. I guess you're trying to make a counter causality claim that the cost is basically prison costs, not just uh, due to marijuana, but there are all kinds of reasons that prison costs are high. Um, but of course, if we had one third less prisoners, we'd probably need fewer prison guards. And if they're getting those high base salaries, then we wouldn't be having to pay as many people that high base salary. So I'm not sure that your argument really is applicable on that point. Uh, the health care issue, um, again, I think you're making the same kind of argument here about causality. I'm not sure it addresses the advocate's point on that issue, though. Uh, then there's some general evidence challenges on the second point. You needed a little bit clearer signposting there. You got a lot of hypotheticals. Uh, about supply and demand and cost, and at one point you kind of inject a whole bunch of economic terms, but you need to explain how those economic terms apply. I did think that there was an explanation, for instance, on the supply side, based on the notion that marijuana is relatively easy to grow, and what's the likelihood that it's going to be supplied through um, you know, standard uh, commercial processes instead of people just growing it on their own. And, and was that considered in figuring out what the fiscal impact would be? That's a reasonable question to make. It would be nice if we had some data to back it up, but I thought the hypothetical on that was okay. Uh, the signpost on the third point also needs to be a little bit sharper. I, did, I think you've got a good argument here about uh, gang violence and associations. I think you need some data to back it up. For instance, people often point to uh, prohibition is an analogy and they suggest that organized crime largely disappeared as a result of getting rid of uh, prohibition and 
I, you know, I think there's probably a good argument to make that says, you know, organized crime didn't disappear. They just moved to other profitable and even more dangerous kinds of organized behavior. And that seems to be the inference that you're applying here. Then there's some other arguments that I think are really more about what the negative consequences of legalization are. Those would be policy arguments. They're not relevant to the economic issue. I, although I do kind of like the summary quote that you have. And of course, we give high credibility to those Trojan professors, I suppose. All right. And I'm sure Chewy will make all that money cut.